One of the biggest gripes for American track fans for a long time now has been the lack of sub-elite racing in the country. The lack of kind of development for that next level of runners to kind of step up into the limelight. Like sure, we have Diamond League events, we have USATF events that are on that high pedestal like Peyton Jordan, like Prefontaine, um, like Drake Relays, but what if we just had a specific league for that sub-elite, that Olympic developmental runner? Could be exciting, a team-based competition. Well, that's what the Eastern Track League is trying to bring to us. So two weeks ago, Eastern Track League announced its existence. Um, it's a partnership between the Atlanta Track Club, the District Track Club, which is out of D.C., one one New Jersey, New York, um, and then Furman Elite and the newly formed Nashville Track Club, which has the coolest logo of any track club I've ever seen. So the league as we know it is two meets in, but they're kind of the preview meets. Not all of the races have been contested yet, but let's kind of run into the schedule, and then I want to go over the meets themselves and what we're seeing so far. So these being primarily middle distance programs, middle distance clubs. In the future, going forward, I think there's a lot that could be added to this concept. There's a lot that can be improved upon on this concept. And I think we can take this and either expand the amount of groups involved or kind of replicate this on the West Coast and more in the Midwest and maybe have sort of a feeder league that feeds into one uh, championship at the end. I'll kind of get into that at the end of this video for how to go forward and what I think they could possibly add. Um, but I also have some emails going back and forth with them just to get some things ironed out. And uh, yeah, I think we'll see a lot from them going forward. But let's dive into the schedule. So, so far we've had the Swarthmore Last Chance Meet, of uh, which the 1500 meter was the Eastern Track League scheduled event. We then had at the Georgia Meet of Champions, the 800 meters was the race that was run. Um, Next week, May 31st through June 1st at the Music City Distance Carnival, we're going to have the 800, the 1500, the 3000 meter steeplechase, and the 5000 meter being contested. Um, the 5000 meter to be the longest race. Um, and then at the Adrian Martinez Classic on June 13th, we're going to have the 800, the 1500, and the 5000 again. And on June 30th at the Princeton Qualifier, we have the 800, the 1500, and the 3000 meter steeplechase once more. And then at the series finale on June 13th at the DCRR Track Championship, we're going to have the 800, the 1500, and the 3,000 meter steeplechase. Now, the way that they are compiling scores um, by team base is by IAAF, the IAAF scoring table. So if you're not familiar how the IAAF scoring tables work, for each time it has a subsequent point level assigned to it. So with this, you can kind of compare women's times to men's times, you can compare 1500 meters to 800 meters. It's not perfect, but it gives you a good idea of what certain events are worth compared to other events and other um, disciplines. But it works well here. I actually, I like this a lot because in events where you have non-team members mixed in and where you're not racing the same disciplines all the time, I think it does a really good job of just giving a different way to score me. Um, and I I like that aspect of it a lot. So, so far we've had the Swarthmore 1500 and then the Media Champions 800. So I want to dive into that. I've kind of scored them out as far as I know, taking the top eight from each team on races that have more than eight of these team members and then just taking the numbers I have for races that don't. Um, and then I've kind of compiled that all down below. So let's dive into the 1500 meter at Swarthmore. Um, this meet was won by Ryan Adams of Furman, 342.57. That's 1,072 points. Uh, then Rob Napolitano of Hoka, New Jersey, New York, 342.75. And that's 10, 1,070 points with Jacob Dunford of District Track Club right behind him and 342.75, and that's 1,070 points. So that's top three. Overall, you had Furman coming in first place uh, overall. Then two Hoka, New Jersey, New York, runners in second and fourth and then two district track club runners in third and fifth um and then an atlanta track club member brandon lassiter coming in sixth so you'll kind of see that below and i think this will even out i suppose this will even out as we get forward because not everyone has raced we have not for instance seen a nashville track club member race um i don't have any information as far as that goes so far but i'm hoping that's one of the things that get cleared up as we kind of go forward 
So not everyone is represented, um, and it's not 100% complete. So we don't have the same amount of, of racers from each team being accounted for yet, but I feel like over six events, that's going to even itself out um, as you have different specialties for different teams. You know, you're going up to 5,000 that I don't think New York, New Jersey, or Atlanta have quite as many 5,000 meter runners as, say, Furman Elite does. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. So then out. moving on to the women's 1,500 meters. You have it won by Aji Wilson, who obviously is not uh, affiliated with any of the five teams, but it's kind of opened everyone, so that's why the first the first place finisher might not be the first place team finisher. Um, think of it like you would a college track meet. That's how I picture this being scored, and I think that's what gives it some of the excitement, um, just with my experience with college meets. Um, so Aji Wilson running her off event, the 15 running 408. The top team finisher, Daniel Aragon of Hoka, New Jersey, New York, 409.17. That's worth 1,133 points. Um, there are only two members in this heat. Claudia Saunders of District Track Club running 413.62 in 10.98 is the second team finisher. So that tells you what it's going to be like, even in races where you don't have a lot of the teams that we are kind of keeping track of. It's still going to be a full race, and I think if they kind of get behind this and can find a way to broadcast this and make more content around it, it's going to be really fun. Okay, on to the 800 meters. So let's go men since we went with that first. Um, this is kind of a, this is where I made the decision to count the top eight. I don't know if that's what they're going to do going forward, but that's the decision I made. So we'll see if my numbers match up once the official numbers are announced. Um, because in the men's 800 readers, you had 14 runners in it. So I figured it, you know, if we're scoring it like track meet, top eight are what you usually take. Um, given the race. So it's won by Andres Arroyo, who ran unattached in 144.96, and that will end up being the um, best result out of all of these races so far. Um, but the top team time was Chris Geisting of Hoka, New Jersey, New York in 146.79, Abraham Alvarado of Atlanta Track Club in 147.21, and Dylan Capwell of Atlanta Track Club in 147.38. Um, and then the women's race, you had... Agnes Abu in 201.86 running unattached, and then the top team time, uh, Yolanda Grambi of Atlanta Track Club running 202.18. So let's move on to the actual team scores. So from the first meet in the men's, you had Hoka, New Jersey, New York Track Club with 21.37 points, um, followed by the District Track Club with 21.33, Atlanta Track Club with 10.59, and Furman with 10.72. So I feel like this is where it's going to slowly add up over time. I think right now you're going to see a bigger discrepancy, and especially with Nashville not having raced yet. Um, on the women's side of that first meet, New Jersey and New York had 1,133, and the district had 1,098. On to meet two, Atlanta Track Club really ran away with it because of how many people they had placed in the top eight. So this might change. This would be the one thing that would change. Atlanta Track Club had 4,377 points. New Jersey, New York had 2,216, and the district had 2,184. On the women's side, Atlanta Track Club had 2,153. New Jersey, New York had 2,140, and district had 1,106. Which brings the total standings through two meets. Atlanta Track Club is winning on the men's side with 5,436 points, followed by Hoka, New Jersey with, 3, 000, with 4,353, the district with 4,317, and Furman with the one race, the one win, 1,072 points. On the women's side, you have New Jersey, New York at 3,273, the district at 2,204, and Atlanta Track Club bringing up third place with 2,153, and Furman and Nashville have yet to race on the women's side. So it'll be interesting to see how this will kind of close out, what we'll see going forward from all the teams. But you also have the individual aspect too. So the thing I like about the points is you can kind of dive into and see what the most impressive performances are across all meets. So the top performances so far on the women's side all come from the 1500, um, with Audrey Wilson's 408.17, followed by Eleanor Perrier's 408.49, and Daniel Aragon's 409.17 being the top team performance with scoring 1,133 points. Um, on the men's side, it's all from the 800. See, this we have kind of the quality of races really make a difference, especially as far as the points go. Um, Andres Arroyo with his 144.96, scoring 1,175 points, followed by Kwame Prince 
running 145.58, followed by Chris Geisting of Hoka, New York, New Jersey, New York, running 146.79. Uh, Kwame Prince being the top team participant again with that 1,157. So that's kind of how it shapes up so far. Again, through two meets, through two races, um, that's not going to be how this thing goes. And I hope that the hype for it kind of ramps up because it's an exciting thing to kind of follow. You're on that precipice of you could start to see some elite times coming from these athletes and something that we can really get behind. Now, going forward, I'm really interested to see how this plays out because I think next year or the year after, you know, within the next five years even, if you set that timetable, you could have a segment of circuits where you have the Eastern Track League, the Western, and then the Central um, that could all meet up for one giant championship re- meet, maybe even at USATF or something in conjunction with USATF. Um, I think that would be really interesting. And just as a way for that non-elite, that non-road racer, um, more opportunities for our kind of post-collegiate athletes looking for a chance to race. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what happens going forward. In the future, I hope to run down kind of each team, give my expectations and my analysis of what they bring to the table. But I'm waiting to get some information from them, and I'm waiting to see if that interests you guys. So let me know how you want me to cover this going forward and uh, what your expectations are for the Eastern Track League. And I would appreciate that greatly. So keep working hard. Keep being nice.